Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 29th of June, and the episode title is What Happened to the Last Podcast? Ganesha Games won the RPG Publisher Spotlight this month. In the end, I couldn't get a response from Ganesha. However, good news, I can confirm that Andrea, the head guy there, has successfully escaped Ukraine. Ganesha is registered in the Ukraine, and they were based there when the Russians invaded. But it does seem as if Andrea and his wife have made it back to his home country of Italy. The RPG Publisher Spotlight for the company is up and includes a long list of authors and designers who also work with Ganesha. And one of those designers is none other than Graham Davis of Warhammer and Vampire Fane. And impressively, kindly, Graham did get in touch. Graham explained that he did work with Andrea a little while ago and hoped to do more work on the title of Gods and Mortals. However, Ganesha did not decide to focus their business on that particular range. You see, Ganesha does publish Tales of Blades and Heroes, a fantasy RPG, but it's better known for skirmish games like the platinum bestseller Song of Blades and Heroes and for the solo game for Against Darkness. So, what did happen to the podcast last week? The short answer is that my broadband went down and it stayed down for over four days, flickering to life only for a few minutes in the middle of the night. My ISP, Virgin Media, pays compensation if you're out for two solid days and I'm yet to see if I'll get any and I hope those brief spurts of activity in the dead of night don't cancel out that two solid days requirement. Dear engineers among you, what on earth would cause broadband connection to be mostly off for four days? Surely if there's a hardware fault and part needed to be shipped in, then there'd be no life at all. Mind you, I did say that was the short version. There is a slightly longer version. On the day the internet died, I was at a 30th reunion for my school year, and on the way there, I encountered a parked convoy of tanks, jeeps and motorbikes with machine guns on the streets of Edinburgh. I can assure you that even in an election year, even on a football weekend, we don't usually get tanks on the street. But I made it through the tanks and I made it through the reunion and I was in the pub when Virgin Media texted me to say that the broadband had a problem. Oh well, I thought, I'll stay here for just one pint more. Four pints later, I went home. Fate, I think, was sure there would be no podcast on Saturday, but I was absolutely going to do one on Sunday. There are some headlines since we last spoke worthy of making this podcast, and not least among them, is that D&D 2024 is now on pre-order. I'm seeing media outlets calling it D&D 5.5, 1 D&D and D&D 6, but I think Wizards of the Coast are officially, but without confirmation, calling it D&D 2024. The question is whether D&D fans will buy it, or whether they'll stick with 5e. Another question is if D&D 2024 does sell, then where will it sell from? It feels unlikely people are pre-ordering it from Wizards of the Coast's virtual tabletop, as we've seen little of that, and it feels years away. D&D Beyond, I'm sure, will get some sales in. Meanwhile, Raw20 and the DMs Guild are doing their best to make certain you buy it from them, and have a D&D 2024 bundle deal. If you pre-order all three core books from them, then you will get the expanded Monster Manual Roll20 module for free. And as a reminder, with the dates, the three core books are D&D 2024 Player's Handbook, and for Roll20 that's due for on September 17th, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and that's due November 12th, and the Monster Manual, which is due on February the 18th in 2025. 
And I, to say it again, all those dates are accurate for Raw 20. And isn't it weird that Wizards of the Coast are calling these core rules 2024 release when one of the core books clearly isn't coming out in 2024? Another weird story comes from Morris at NWorld, who asks, Is Evil Genius Games doubling down on NFTs and blockchains? As a refresher, Evil Genius has some really impressive movie licenses and the Everyday Heroes RPG system to power them. They lost the Rebel Moon license in a legal twist from Netflix and lost some staff too. Some of those departing staff said it was because they didn't like the ethics of the technical path Evil Genius was going down. And Evil Genius countered by saying they were absolutely not going to use cryptocurrencies or blockchain in their system. It's weird then to see Evil Genius pitching at Consensus 2024, a convention run by the cryptocurrency company Cointesk. And it's all about Web3, and where Dave Scott, the Evil Genius boss, explained how their NFTs will work with their system. In better news, I went to Game On, which is the world's largest interactive exhibition of computer games and their culture. It's here in Edinburgh and at the National Museum of Scotland for the next few months. At Game On, you can play retro games and even some more modern ones. In fact, there's about 100 consoles that are wired up to some of the first, most iconic and culturally significant games of all time. If you're in Geek Nata's hometown of Edinburgh, I recommend checking out Game On. Those tanks are gone, I promise. Bronwyn who was out of the country while I was suffered all my broadband woes and couldn't sub in for me, also found some retro classics. Marvel's Man-Thing is now a wonderfully weird model, which you can pre-order from retailers like Forbidden Planet. Bronwyn seems to love those dead red eyes and those bulging green muscles. And who can blame her? Another great spot is that the European Space Agency has been making Lego bricks out of space dust. Imagine standing on a block of 5 billion year old space dirt. The ESA space bricks are now on display in some Lego stores worldwide. And sticking with retro and exciting news, Broadman's Eagle Eyes gives us the heads up that MGM has commissioned an 8 episode series of The Institute. That's a Stephen King series about kids kidnapped and trapped in the US government testing facility. And to finish up, I want to highlight a guest post by So Many Robots, who run a successful 5e Rules patron, and have a Kickstarter running now for Songs of the Spellbound Sea. For Geek Native, they've written some tips on how to run a seafaring campaign. Lastly, in bundles, I've written up the Bundle of Holding and Alligator Alley's sci-fi TTRPG for Esper Genesis. And on that note, may your Wi-Fi remain strong and see you next week.